The National Breast Cancer Coalition is a grassroots organization that has dedicated itself to better public policy for diagnosis and treatment of breast cancer. Now believe me folks, this is important. The coalition has given us a reasonable deadline. They call it Breast Cancer Deadline 2020. And through this racing series, we're going to support them in every possible way we can. This is Dodge Viper Cup. As much as we love our racing, there are things that are far more important and the National Breast Cancer Coalition is a worthy cause for a disease that strikes way too close to home for so many, myself included. A, a worthy cause and now the official charity of the Dodge Viper Cup presented by Pennzoil Ultra. Let's get right to the starting lineup for this fourth round of the championship. Ben Keating, his third consecutive pole. Jeff Courtney, both of them having to repair their cars from their contact in that third round. A.J. Morgan, winner of that third round, winner of two races as a matter of fact, and Von Quillick. Then Fiorelli continuing his strong return. And Jimmy Kite, who's figured it out a little bit. The oval racer really starting to figure this out. Andy Bell, who had such an exciting race in round three. And Kurt Solberger completes row number four. And then we take a look at Todd Nelson and Dave Mazik. Great to have them on board as well as they fill out the fifth row of this race. And Tom, as always, it's when those wheeling lights go out. I'm Greg Creamer along with Tom Natchew, and we're ready for this fourth round. Standing starts make Dodge Viper Cup stand out from the rest of the pack. And look at the torque that's available to these drivers as they leave the line, Greg. Well, when they untwist those V10s as we have just done, it is amazing. Courtney getting a really strong launch, but Keating just enough. Sort of fades to the left, blocks Courtney a little bit, and should be comfortably able to hang on down into turn one. Of course, what happens on the exit? Look at Von Quillick trying the outside. Well, Michael Von Quillick, a little optimistic there, especially on A.J. Morgan, but he'll settle into fourth. Meanwhile, Jeff Courtney's uh, strategy has got to be different today. He tried to win the race from second place last uh, race. Didn't really work out for him. you got to think he wants to get to the lead early. You would think so, but in qualifying, Keating came out and threw down a lap that was over half a second quicker than Courtney. Behind him, it's quite close, but it was as if Keating said, I am going to go out and set a time and I'm going to drive the wheels off thing and get as far out front as I can. So it'll be interesting to see those two different thought patterns play out. And once again, A.J. Morgan sits in third going, this will be interesting. <laughs> this ought to be interesting. <laughs> uh, ben Keating definitely has his eyes set on the championship. And as he goes forward, he is definitely in better shape than he was last year. He's doing way more training on the simulator than he did last year and it shows I mean he comes up to this racetrack New Jersey Motorsports Park where we've never been before he is totally prepared Todd Nelson making a move on Andy Bell oh and he gave, there's contact Andy Bell closing the door as Nelson was going for a gap and that looked like maybe a bit of an optimistic lunge speaking of optimism as you talked about Courtney wants the front early and is trying to get it done down into turn one can't quite Get it done there still though, very close to Keating as they come up and over that interesting little rise right at the exit of the turn. Once again, we're on board with Todd Nelson now and uh, he's got damage, that car just not willing to turn. He's coming back across the track and sliding to a stop. So maybe something left over Tom from that incident. So he's trying to gather it up. Well, Todd Nelson, boy, visibly, you know, yeah. he looks like he's okay, but uh, he may, just may have seen the red mist just a little bit much there. Meanwhile, there's the evidence. Oh, oh boy. Now, that's just not going to work out. That reminds me of those clown cars they used to have in the, in the local parades where they steered from both ends. Uh, if you want to effectively break the rear end of a Viper, 
I guess the best tool to use is another Viper. Well, and he did that, and that's going to, it looks like, spell the end of the day to Andy Bell. That is a tough deal after really starting to figure things out, I think, in the third round of the championship. Uh, he's now going to be parked. We'll see, of course, whether Todd Nelson has damage, and uh, if he does, if he's able to get it to pit lane and get it fixed. Meanwhile, we're on board with Ben Keating, and uh, he is coming through this last few sequence of corners, come up underneath the bridge, then it's the final turn onto the straight, and I think what's going to greet him is a full course caution because of where Andy Bell's car is parked. Yeah, it's a tough deal for Andy Bell, and there's not much he can do about it. Uh, early on the radio, they said it was going to be a flat toe, but they're definitely going to need a rollback for that car. So Keating leads under yellow from Courtney and Morgan. We'll be back. And the full course caution continues here at New Jersey Motorsports Park, Millville, New Jersey, for this fourth round of the Dodge Viper Cup presented by Pennzoil Ultra as the incident between Todd Nelson and Andy Bell. Left Andy Bell's car in a questionable spot. Here's another look at it. And as you can see, post-contact, there it is. The damage to that right rear corner was immediate, Tom, and that's why he was absolutely not able to move. Yeah, one of the fasteners has let go after that impact with Todd Nelson's car, and we're not exactly sure about the state of uh, Todd Nelson's car. He obviously had some difficulties just before the break. We saw him leave the track. That could have been owing to some damage that he has, or it could have been just owing to more optimism on Todd's part. Meanwhile, here's a replay from the onboard of Bell. Watch the hit right there. And uh, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, of all the gestures he could have come up with, that was probably the most family friendly. But you can see, he, he saw exactly what happened yeah. and he held up that hand saying, hey, come on. And it was perfect. It's Jersey. So say, what's the matter, you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's great to be in Jersey, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. So they continue under the uh, pace car at this point. And uh, here's a look at getting that car hooked up to go on the back of the rollback and that long lonely ride in and boy you hate that when it's first lap too yeah it's tough uh, and there's uh, you know at first we thought it was going to be a flat toe because the car didn't look that damaged but how are you going to tow something like that in which has a, an attitude of itself of its own you know it looks like one of those clown cars that just doesn't steer properly uh that you see in the local parade and holy mackerel that was a big hit yeah, he got him good, and it just looked like two guys going for the same spot, and as you see that opening, you think he's lost it or he's staying out wide. You dive to the inside right as he makes the turn into the apex, and uh, both cars simply cannot fill that same space, and this is what happens sometimes, and it's a tough thing to see, and Andy Bell gets a different kind of a ride this weekend, not certainly one that he wanted to have, but uh, that means we should be able to get back to green flag racing, and he's making the most of it, having a way for the fans. Well, Andy Bell has uh, had a ride in a Dodge Viper. Now he's had, got a ride in the back of a tow truck, and there's nothing wrong with that. They're all new experiences for the freestyle motocross rider. Absolutely. Jimmy Kite, in the meantime, yeah. is also in this race. IndyCar driver, also a, a, a big standout in USAC. He's starting to get the hang of this, and Jimmy Kite actually outqualified Andy Bell for uh, this race, uh, albeit by a couple of tenths, but these two guys under the Lux Performance banner have been battling all weekend long, and making a heck of a lot of fun out of it too. Yeah, it's about the experience certainly and Kite obviously has quite a bit on four wheels and making that pay. Meanwhile, Pace Car is in, so is Nelson in the back of the field, so maybe he did have some sort of an issue. Meanwhile, we are watching for it. Green flag flies and Ben Keating leads away and man, did he time that beautifully. I don't know whether he caught Courtney napping or not, but he gets a huge gap right away and immediately starts to open that lead. And you'll notice on the back of an awful lot of these cars the, president, the uh, National Breast Cancer Coalition sticker on the car, as you talked about at the top of the show, Tom, is uh, absolutely so crucial uh, in terms of fighting this disease. And as we watch these beautiful cars wind their way through the racetrack, it is very, very important that we fight this disease. And I like the concept that they have put together about a deadline. I've had a personal experience with it. It is a very, very devastating thing. And this is a very special program. Let's hear a little bit more from the president of that coalition. Friend. Breast cancer deadline 2020 is very important to us in Dodge Viper Cup. Yes. Now you've had a taste of Dodge Viper Cup. What are your impressions? You know, it was so exciting. It was a lot of fun. And it was great to see people so passionate about what they're doing and really fearless individuals who are passionate about it. And that's really the National Breast Cancer Coalition, too. It's women and men across the country who are fearless and passionate about ending breast cancer. And, you know, our partnership with Dodge and our race to end breast cancer is so important to us, so we're very grateful. It's been 20 years since you beat breast cancer yourself, and you've been involved every step of the way, even being on a president's uh, council. 
Yes, I have been involved since the beginning of the National Breast Cancer Coalition 20 years now. I'm a 23 year survival. I have been very fortunate to work with the White House and Congress and most fortunate really to work with women and men across the country who are dedicated to ending this disease. I like how she put that in racing terms. It is a race. It's a deadline that's finally been established. And boy, I'll tell you, uh, if we can get that one done, what a victory that will be. It will be fantastic. Fran Visco's had a great time at the track this weekend. She's a real trooper. She has done a, a lot of things in a very short period of time, every one of them new to her. And it's, uh, it was a pleasure to have her here this weekend. Well, a great cause to be sure. But back to the action here in this fourth round of the Dodge Viper Cup presented by Pennzoil Ultra. We've got another great battle shaping up. And guess who? Von Quillick, Fiorelli, right in that mix again. And uh, they seem to always find each other on the track here. And then you got Solberger, who had that problem in the third round. So it's nice to see him being able to continue. But really, we've got this battle here between, you know, behind those three guys up front, relatively close with uh, Von Quillick, Fiorelli, Solberger, and Jimmy Kite coming on strong, but it's Keating, Courtney, and A.J. Morgan once again on the provisional top of the box. Welcome back to this fourth round of the Dodge Viper Cup presented by Pennzoil Ultra. Beautiful look there of Ben Keating as he just power controls that car through one of these great corners at New Jersey Motorsports Park. There's a look at the 84 of Kurt Solberger. Problems in the third round here, but having a great race here. But a guy that's kind of come alive a little bit is chasing him right now. And that is one of our celebrity drivers, Jimmy Kite. And Jimmy is really starting to figure out this road racing thing and taking a run at one of the experienced drivers. And a bit earlier, we caught up with Jimmy and asked him to kind of take us through why he really is enjoying the Dodge Viper Cup. I don't know if I'd call it tamer. I mean, I've, uh, I've already scared myself quite a bit this weekend learning it. It's just a totally different beast than what I'm used to. You know, the ovals, whether it's dirt or pavement, it's just so different with these big vipers, you know, the, the way they, they actually stop a lot better than I thought, but just, you know, sliding them around, the real heavy beast, they accelerate real good. They're a lot of fun, and it's, uh, these guys out here definitely know what they're doing. I mean, I got a, got a lot of catching up to do this weekend. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. I mean, everybody just laid back. You're not, it's not that every team's got their stuff covered up and it's secret, you know, you can't go talk to the other guys. I mean, it's just really cool that, you know, the garages are open, the other drivers, you know, the drivers talk a lot, but I mean, just even the crews mingling, talking, hanging out, it just, I'm enjoying it. I mean, the whole weekend, the whole atmosphere, to me, it's just really relaxed, a lot of fun. Now, once you get out there on the racetrack, it's still, you know, go on kill. And I mean, all the other drivers are the same way. I mean, they've, they've made it pretty clear too, that there's a couple of times where I've been in somebody's way and they let me know and they went by and it's, uh, you know, it's just a fun weekend, but still a racing event. I love the way you put it. It could be friendly and everything, but the minute you get on the track, the switch goes to go on kill. Uh, you're after them. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what a phaser is, you have two settings, stun and kill. <laughs> Jimmy's had a good time, and really the car is the star here. Look at the view oh, of that incredible. Dodge Viper. It is so solid, so stable, and such a challenge here at New Jersey Motorsports Park, as opposed to where we were last time for two rounds of Dodge Viper Cup Sebring. Two completely different animals, and the car doesn't seem to be fussed about it. No, and it's well balanced, but it still delivers that immense amount of power and torque that makes it a truly spectacular supercar. And you can see it just absolutely played out here. And meanwhile, Fiorelli is talking about playing it out, really starting to go after Von Quillick here in this battle. Von Quillick is fourth, and Fiorelli, as you're looking back, he is uh, after it in a big way at this point. Mike Von Quillick loves this kind of thing. He loves the competition in Dodge Viper Cup because he knows they're going to race clean and they're going to race hard. And Mike Von Quillick just comes into his own in a situation just like this. And that last turn, that quick right onto this front straight, boy, it, it isn't that tough looking a corner, but you've got to balance that car through there because it's huge to get onto this front straight. Uh, absolutely. It reminds me of the first turn at Mid-Ohio, which looks like a kink, but it's really a turn. And, uh, you know, you've got to carry the speed through there because it's such a long straight afterwards. So uh, up um, towards the uphill there. But these cars, man, I'll tell you, Greg, I'm, I'm, I, I haven't seen the cars shot quite this way, but they look absolutely fantastic. Well, it's in your face. I mean, that's and that's what makes these cars like the jump right there. You don't see that angle elsewhere. It is absolutely spectacular uh, just to see these cars, the cameras on the ground, the onboards on the ground. So you get that look. Look at Fiorelli in that back end Boy, stepping he's out using on it, throttle, isn't he? man. <laughs> you can uh, tell as soon as he gets, gets onto the throttle, those Michelins are very sticky, but not quite sticky enough to hold all of that torque that these big V10s make. Yeah, a V10 will twist it up. Yes, it will. <laughs> 
The other thing I want to mention about these cars, I mean, we've seen uh, Fiorelli, his big crash. We've seen incidents all uh, year, last year, with, with fairly significant impacts, and everybody has walked away. These are strong race cars. They're strong. They do a nice job of transferring the energy around the driver while not and you know absorbing a huge amount of damage in the car itself it's really amazing how they've been designed and uh, with all of that you can still have racing like this like we've seen up front in this great battle for the four spot and uh, tell you Fiorelli is just flat relentless you know Dave Fiorelli is a great addition to this series this is his first year in Dodge Viper Cup he had a unfortunate incident at Sebring and he's actually got two cars now so this is a committed individual and so is Mike Von Quillick well he loves just pounding that curve at the apex of one and it just pitches him out toward the track out point and Fiorelli is right there. That's one of the things that you, you mentioned turn one at Mid-Ohio. This track's got a couple of those rises right at key points on track outs and, and the like and that jump uh, makes for a very exciting venue. You know, New Jersey Motorsports Park came a long way in a very short period of time. Uh, every single facet of this track is great, including the clubhouse. We've got some great meals there. It's a great place to go racing with Dodge Viper Cup presented by Pennzoil Ultra. The New Jersey Motorsports Park Control Tower. Also apparently a really fine place to watch some great racing here in this fourth round of the Dodge Viper Cup presented by Pennzoil Ultra. Pretty good crowd up on that top step. Standing room only, mate. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ben Keating out of that last turn down the front straight, white flag flies, and he has been able to open that margin up. We've been following some of the great battles going on behind this group, and this is why, because after that restart, Courtney just never could reel Keating back in again and uh, Ben has been able to open up a pretty good margin. And if he can hang on, even though he's had three poles this year, this would be his first win. You know, Ben Keating has had some bad luck. He's had some uh, some issues, but definitely he showed up at New Jersey Motorsports Park this weekend, ready to race, and it shows. Well, for all of his issues, and sometimes, you know, he's certainly aggressive, and that's occasionally got him into a little trouble, you can't deny the man's speed and the man's commitment. And uh, a drive like this today, this has been absolutely picture perfect thus far. And, uh, you know, when you've been able to gap a guy like like Jeff Courtney with his experience in racing in general and in Vipers in particular, you've done some. Yeah, he's done a really good job. And you know, both of these crews for these cars, remember in, the, in round number three, they were both damaged significantly. They actually worked together, actually ordered pizzas together to get both these cars on the track to do exactly what we're watching now. Fortunately, Jeff Courtney doesn't seem to be close enough to be able to make a real approach. Yeah, well, that was exactly what Jimmy Kite was talking about, wasn't he? That that, uh, that camaraderie in the paddock, the competition intense on the track, but in the paddock, this is really a family. And boy, what a great shot, just the, uh, the, the look of that car. And uh, it, they are beautiful machines. And here comes Ben Keating about to enjoy that beautiful moment that every racer lives for, and that's that first one to see that checker fly. And Ben Keating gets it done here in the fourth round of the championship, finally getting his first win of the season. Courtney, another very strong post podium sitting in the second spot he has a win this year too the points battle is going to be very very close indeed and uh, today A.J. Morgan just didn't quite have enough to stay with these two guys well the pace is it was incredible and, and Jeff Courtney did a great job be, to be able to keep yeah. Ben in sight but Ben was definitely going for it there's your results and you can see the margin those lead two again uh, they just opened up that margin over Morgan and Von Quillick and Fiorelli that great battle and uh, it was still Von Quillick able to hang on over Fiorelli and then Jimmy Kite doing a nice job bringing that to, into the top six here in only his second race in the Dodge Viper Cup so very very close indeed and uh, in terms of the points well obviously you've got Ben Keating now out front but he has now made his way into victory circle as has Tom Natchew and this guy is out and happy Well, there, there, there is nothing like a cold shower right after a win, Ben. That is very true. I'm very happy to see you up here, Tom. It's very good to see you. Good, Ray, good day to end it off. We have uh, we've worked extremely hard this weekend. Uh, we've been fast all weekend uh, and uh, really disappointed at how it turned out yesterday. Makes it that much more gratifying. Uh, the ViperExchange.com uh, crew prepared the ViperExchange.com car extremely well. Uh, and hopefully we win on Sunday and sell some on Monday. That's the whole idea of the game. Now, there's some great camaraderie in the garage area between your guys and the 99 car. That is true. You know, after we uh, uh, got together in last uh, yesterday afternoon's race, uh, you know, we had a little pizza party uh, while we were all repairing our car for today's race. <laughs> uh, we had a great run. Jeff ran a great race. Uh, 
you know, I had a really good restart uh, after the full course yellow uh, and uh, was able to maintain the margin. Uh, you know, they gave me a hard time on the radio for uh, uh, letting him get up to a second behind me there at the end. I said, I, there's no way I'm screwing up on the last lap. So it was great. Congratulations, Ben. All the best. Well, Jeff Courtney, P2 isn't uh, what you wanted, but it's a lot better than it was yesterday. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. I thought, uh, I knew he had a really good car today, better than yesterday. Yesterday, I think we had the better car and still feel bad about what happened. Uh, it was mechanical, though, but... Today, I thought if I could hang with him and maybe make him work, show him in the mirrors, but on the restart, he just killed me, and I lost touch, and then he just smoothed out, and we were battling the push. He did a great job. He's fast. We did, we're talking about what was going on in the garage area last night. That was a really special story. Yeah, these guys, uh, well, we all were here till probably 10, 10.30, 16-hour day. Very, very good. Congratulations, mate. Thanks. All the best. Well, you know, when you uh, when you finish on the podium, it's always a good day. And, of course, you're accumulating points for a championship here, and that's a great thing. Boy, I tell you, this was one heck of a weekend, getting a win yesterday and then a third place today. Being on the podium two, day, two days in a row is great. Uh, I owe this race to uh, hard brakes for these uh, titanium heat shields on my brakes because carrying the rewards weight, so it's tough on brakes. But, you know, we managed the heat pretty well for that. And thanks to my dad, Archer Racing, as always. They bring me here, so i got to thank them, too. Well, it's a hot day, but you look as cool as a cucumber. Yep. Uh, man, I tell you, a lot of training, that's what you get. So we hope to stay cool the rest of the year. <laughs> All the best. Well, and there it is. A big round of applause for that podium. But they drove a great race. They've had a great weekend here at New Jersey Motorsports Park. And now the celebrations begin. <laughs> Keating is in the middle of a uh, champagne sandwich, and that's how you like it. A lot of fun there, and uh, just a marvelous weekend of racing. Ben Keating comes out with the win today, and it couldn't be closer in the points. As we head into the next two rounds of the championship, we'll be at another glorious venue, Virginia International Raceway. So make sure you join us then. For Tom Matthew, I'm Greg Creamer. Take care, everybody.